What's in it for me? Anybody ever hear someone say that? Have you ever said it? More often, probably, than somebody saying it, they're thinking it. You know, before you go do something, you sometimes think, well, if I do that, what am I going to get out of it? What, what's in it for me? Maybe something as simple as buying a product. You expect to get back what you pay, right? Well, good luck with that. But anyway, we, we expect something. Too often, though, we do a favor for somebody, and, or somebody does a favor for you, and you think, wow, that's good. But all the while, they're thinking, I'm setting a friendship up here, and I want to get something back later. What about obeying the gospel, becoming a Christian, obtaining your salvation? Many in our world today seem to say, what's in it for me? Credit to a man named Eris Benson for putting together a list I'm going to share with you today and uh, sort of answers this question. Seven things. What's in it for me? God remembers forgiven sins no more. Acts 2.38. Then Peter said to them, Repent, and let every one of you be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins, and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. Hebrews 10.17. Then he adds, Their sins and their lawless deeds I will remember no more. What's in it for me? Rest and peace of mind. Matthew eleven twenty eight 28 and following. Come to me, all you that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and lowly in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. What's in it for me? Reconciliation with God. 2 Corinthians 5, 18 and following. Now all things are of God who has reconciled us to himself through Jesus Christ and has given us the ministry of reconciliation. That is that God was in Christ reconciling the world to himself, not imputing their trespasses to them and has committed us to the, the word of reconciliation. What's in it for me? The privilege of worshiping God. John 4, 24, God is spirit, and those who worship him must worship him in spirit and truth. Acts 2, 42, and they continue steadfastly in the apostles' doctrine and fellowship, in the breaking of bread, and in prayers. Acts 27, now on the first day of the week when the disciples came together to break bread, Paul, ready to depart the next day, spoke to them and continued his passage until midnight. Ephesians 5, 19, speaking to one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing and making melody in your heart to the Lord. What's in it for me? All spiritual blessings. Ephesians 1, 3, blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ who has blessed us with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places in Christ. What's in it for me? Help in trials and afflictions. Acts 18, 9 and 10. Now the Lord spoke to Paul in the night by a vision. Do not be afraid, but speak, and do not keep silent, for I am with you, and no one will attack you to hurt you, for I have many people in this city. What's in it for me? Eternal life hope of eternal life. 1 John 2, 25. And this is the promise that he has promised us, eternal life. Titus 3, 7. And having been justified by his grace, we should have become heirs according to the hope of eternal life. Now this list of seven blessings is by no means all-inclusive. No price can be placed on the benefits of salvation obtained by obeying the gospel. There's not another source other than Jesus to obtain these benefits. To reject such a salvation results in eternal doom. The choice is easy. 
If you believe that Jesus is the Son of God, died for you on the cross and rose again, then now is the time to have these benefits. Come and confess Jesus, repent, be baptized for the forgiveness of sins to walk in newness of life as we stand and sing.